now let's talk about the FQDN egress filtering. So let's take a look at the problem statement here, right? So what happens that when you start building your um, applications and the virtual machines, pretty much every virtual machine or instance will have this requirement to go out to internet and then pull something because this is how the modern applications are also written, okay? So these microservices applications or um, the, the, even the traditional applications, they need to connect to outside world. It could be just a connectivity to a SaaS provider. For example, Office 365 or to OneDrive or to something else, right? So there is a need to go out there. And then there is a need to go out there for to pull some code. For example, to pull things from GitHub or to pull some patch from, from the external website. So yeah, so we know that there is a need to go out and pull this, uh, this thing or connectivity to internet. But if you look at the traditional methods of providing this or solving this problem is by providing a NAT gateway. So if you go to Amazon, they'll say, okay, deploy a NAT gateway. That's your um, private subnet and then you can use NAT. But then when you deploy the NAT gateway, you are only limited to configure rules based on IP, like source, destination, port and protocol. There is no way for you to write a rule based on a URL or FQDN. And this is exactly the problem we are solving. We are saying that this is not the right way to do it because oftentimes these services that you are trying to connect to, they keep changing their IP addresses in the background. So how are you going to cope up with those changes, right? It's impossible. Are you going to go back and then add a new IP address or delete an IP address in your NAT gateway? No, this is not how you should do it, right? So when we provide the, the solution, we give you the option to create the, the rules or security policies using FQDN, okay? The service is actually centrally managed. So the controller is managing this, um, this interaction. So you come here, you create the profile, you create the rules, and then you push it to the gateways that you uh, want to have uh, access to internet with using your, your security posture. And this is actually available both on public subnets or private subnets. This is example from AWS. All right, this is a uh, public and private concept is not really valid in Azure, but the idea is same, right? So you can actually create those rules using the simple FQDN. Okay, so that actually will give you the enhanced security towards the egress traffic. And it supports TCP, UDP, HTTP, HTTPS, all type of flows. And you can also create rules like using the wildcard. For example, star.office365.com. I want to allow everything, right? So you can do that. Um, by default, when you create the rule, it's a zero trust. So nothing is going out. So you have to create the rules to allow the traffic to go out. That's how we work. Okay. Okay, so these are the two deployment models. So on the right hand side, you see a distributed model. In this model, the VPCs, each and every VPC will have a Aviatrix gateway deployed in it, which will actually replace the NAND gateway. And then the traffic will go out from here. This is a very popular model because this is how enterprises, they deploy the VPCs. Like every VPC is responsible is responsible to go out and then fetch whatever they want to fetch. So you create this whitelist and then, you know, that's how you go out towards the internet. But we have another option to centralize it. So now as an enterprise, you say, no, this is not, um, this is not my requirement. I want all the internet traffic to go out through this special egress VPC or security VPC. So we can actually also do that. So instead of deploying these gateways in each and every spoke, you deploy it here, you create the policy, you create the rule, and then traffic will go out towards internet. 